I'm so excited to tell you about my new PDF ebook, Quilling Phrases. After so many of you have told me how much you've enjoyed quilling letters, I realized Quilling Phrases was a book I just had to create so that we can express our quilling in new ways. Let me show you what's inside. This is the table of contents. It contains a thumbnail view of all the pages in your PDF book to help you visually find what you're looking for quickly. Under every page is the page number. The sections are labeled here on the left and they're broken down into the introduction, letters, layouts, and blank layouts. Above some of the pages is a description. The first row here is self-explanatory. The next row are all the letters of the alphabet in both upper and lower case letters and a few punctuation marks. For the layout section, there are three floral patterns to choose from on the left hand side. The first one is called the best things in life are not things. The next floral pattern is called done is better than perfect. And the last floral pattern is called love grows here. Each one shows a finished full page example. The next column of pages are the floral patterns. In the next column, you'll find the floral pattern in color so you can envision the project exactly as I've shown in my photo. You can follow my example or swap out the colors for any that you prefer. Then I've repeated the pattern in black to make it easier for you to trace. The next four columns are all editable, so you can type in them. The first editable page has the floral elements in the same layout as you see in my project. Then for the next three options, I've taken the floral elements and moved them around on the page to give you new options for your phrases. Some are square, some are horizontal. I've tried to give you several options to work with. And lastly, here are two blank pages that allow you to type vertically or horizontally on the page for complete freedom. Feel free to take any of the floral patterns to cut, trace, mix, match, anything you want to make the layout you prefer. Let's talk about the tools and materials. Quilling paper. The paper I'm using is called Cansin Miton, which is thicker than conventional quilling paper. It's 160 GSM in weight, and I cut my own strips at a quarter inch width using a Cricut Explore Air cutting machine. I prefer this thicker paper because I find the conventional quilling paper to be wavier when I'm gluing long straight edges. If you want to cut your own strips, please watch my other videos showing how to cut quilling paper by hand or by machine. You can buy thicker strips from companies like Quilt Creations or Little Circles. You'll also need a slotted or needle quilling tool. A scoring tool such as a dried up pen. Clear drying glue. I prefer Aline's tacky glue in a fine tip glue bottle. Scissors. Some optional tools include the following items. A scrap piece of plastic such as a plastic card or yogurt lid is handy to pour your glue onto for dipping. A ruler, not for measuring but for making straight edges. And finally, some tweezers. Let's talk about instructions in more detail. I want to show you how to start quilling phrases right away. Step one, choose your phrase. Let's say for example, you want to make the phrase bloom where you are planted. Step two, choose your layout and type in your phrase. Now you may need to try different layouts. Let me show you exactly what I mean. Say I want to type my phrase into the wreath layout. See how there's too many words to fit this wreath? So you'll need to choose a different layout that has enough room for your phrase. Okay, so let's try this layout, which has more space. I've typed in the words and added a return to move the words to fit the layout. So the one on the right would be a better layout for this particular phrase. Now you're ready to print this template out. Just remember to check the setting in your print dialog box to set the page scaling to none. For step three, we're going to use the template to trace the letters and stem onto our work surface. Now for my work surface, I prefer to use a stiff card stock like this 80 pound cover weight stock. You can hear how different that is compared to computer paper. Now this kind of paper is way too thin because after you've glued all those elements on the page, you don't want it to warp and buckle. 
So we're just going to put the template on top of our work surface and make sure it doesn't move around by using something like scotch removable tape. And when you go to remove this tape, it's not going to damage any of your paper fibers. So then we're going to take a dried up pen or some other kind of scoring tool and press quite firmly on all those letters. For any of the straight areas, I do use a ruler just because I like things straight. And then I'm going to trace along this main stem here, just these two areas. I'm going to ignore everything else because really by the time you go to do your gluing of your quilling, it should just lie wherever it happens to end up. And so I just use these lines mainly as a guide to make sure that everything on my page is nice and balanced. So after you've traced everything, you can remove your template. The indentations you've made to your work surface shows where to glue your letters and floral elements. If you're off a little bit, it won't be as noticeable. Step four, start quilling letters. After printing the letter patterns, I hole punch the pages and store them in a binder to keep them in alphabetical order. Count all the letters needed for your phrase and prepare all the strips required. My pattern shows you the length of every segment. If you see a dotted line, it means to score along the dotted line and fold. If you see a dot, it means to make a light pencil mark on your strip. If you see a wiggly line, it means to tear the end because the paper I'm using is rather thick and tearing will make the join less noticeable. Let me show you how to measure and prepare your strips with an example of the lowercase letter E. I prefer to turn my page sideways because when I score, my hand movement is straighter but do what you find more comfortable. Place your paper on top of the template. Lay your needle tool across the dotted line and score the paper. Lay the needle tool across the solid line and score. Make a light pencil mark at the dot. Now I'm going to cut along the second score line. When I fold along dotted lines, I use my finger and thumb to line up the edges, and then I fold to get a true 90 degree fold. This will make gluing to your final surface easier. Next, follow my step-by-step -step tutorials to shape all the letters. Skip to the letter you want by clicking the video time in the right hand column. To make sure I don't lose any strips, I cut slits on my pattern and weave the paper through the slits. Storing my prepared strips like this makes me efficient and I don't lose track of them. It also lets me pause at any stage and store it neatly away until I can work again. Store the shaped letters in a box to keep them safe until you're ready to glue them to your work surface. Step 5. Glue your letters onto your work surface. During storage, the letters may relax, so I check them against the template and reshape them if needed, just before gluing. If you'd prefer to glue them right after you've formed them, that's great too. Do whatever works for you. Please watch my other video, Quilling Glue Tips, to see why I smear my glue. Step 6. Shape and glue your floral elements. To make any of the floral designs, simply click the link on the page and follow the step-by-step -step tutorial. After making the floral elements, place them next to your phrase, see how you like the interaction. After I see what I like, that's when I dip it into glue and glue it down. If you'd like to try quilling phrases, then click the link below this video download my PDF file and print it out. To open the PDF file, you will need a free program called Adobe Acrobat Reader. You can find the links below. After you've printed out my free template, let me show you how to make these two letters. These step-by-step -step instructions are exactly what you'll receive after buying my book. I'll also show you how to make each floral element you saw in my project examples so that you can decorate your quilled phrases. Thank you for sharing your enthusiasm for quilling with me. It's because of your encouragement that I've been inspired to make more projects and tools to help you with your quilling projects. With every positive step that we take together, it becomes a cycle of giving and gratitude. So thank you so much for helping me grow. Now let me show you how to shape the upper and lower case letter A. For the upper case letter A, I'm going to take the first segment, fold along the score line, and crease it sharply. Let's put it on the template for now and tackle the next strip. Let's dip the end of the next strip into the glue. Just a small amount is enough. 
Let's move this part of the A out of the way for now. OK, let's realign the letter against the template. I'm going to place fingers gently on top of the letter to prevent it from moving. Now I can glue the smaller segment in place following the template. Hold the pieces in place until the glue has set. Now we can dip the opposite side in glue and swing the other half of the A in place. The uppercase letter A is quite a self-contained shape, so after I dip it in glue, I tend to hover above the indentations on my work surface, making sure I'm in the right spot, then I set it in place, and finally press from above. To start coiling the lowercase letter A, you might be wondering, where does that fold come into play? And it's actually right here. It's very subtle, it's hard to see, but actually I do find that it helps to distinguish between this curved area and that straight area, so hence the fold. So I'm just going to soften the segmented strip beyond the fold, and then I'm just going to rub the curve in where I expect that first curve to be. And a little bit more. So a lot of back and forth is needed when shaping lowercase letters. It's getting there, and then we see that we need the curve right about there. So I'm going to pick it up and curve. And sometimes if I want it just a little tighter, I'll even just kind of give it a little bit of a, a, a motion like that. So I'm just needing to add a little bit more curve along the top. So it's taking shape. So I'm just going to add a little bit there. Okay, do you see how the glue is along the bottom edge? It's actually not on the side edge of the strip. And that's because I want it to attach to the spine of the letter A. So I'm not going to worry about the rest of the curve right now. Right now where my eyes are focused precisely is making sure that this piece of paper here is aligning with the template here. And then my tweezers are guiding this part to connect there. I'm not looking at the rest of this as I attach. And as you can see, it's a little off, not a big deal. What I'm going to do is just I'm going to gently compress it with my fingers until it takes the shape I want. And just remember, you know, <laughs> it's actually what I say to myself all the time. I'm not a machine. You are not a machine. We are humans. So this is a handmade process. It's not going to be precise. You, you might be a little off here and there, and you know what? You're, you're going to live. <laughs> That's what I tell myself. For the lowercase letter A, I've confirmed that it's sitting well on my template. And again, it's a self-contained shape, so I feel pretty good in dipping that in my glue and applying it to my work surface in one fell swoop. Now, if you want to, I'm hovering with my right hand, I'm hovering up in the air, and I've just set down the bottom part of the letter with my left finger, and then that allows me some flexibility on this side to, to decide exactly where do I want to place that. There's the letter A. I hope this introduction of my book helps you get started quilling phrases. I love seeing what you make. So please share your crafting projects with me. Happy quilling!